Hello YouTube. If you follow my research, you have seen my videos about underwater humanoids. I have studied this subject in several countries through the years. Some of my videos are exploring the topic of so-called mermaids and mermen too. In Eurasia and other places around the globe, you know, years go by and more information becomes available. Like this one I'm about to tell you about the Sea of Azov. Uh, most of it came by the way of my Belarus colleagues. Covering the area of about 39,000 square kilometers, the Sea of Azov is a northern extension of the Black Sea and is located in Eastern Europe. The Sea of Azov is an internal sea of the countries of Ukraine and Russia and linked with the Atlantic Ocean uh, via the Black Sea, the Sea of Marmara, the Aegean Sea, and the Mediterranean Sea. The Sea of Azov is an important navigational waterway for the transportation of goods as well as passengers. Um, however, it's a shallow sea, so there's a problem with the movement of ships sometimes. Some of the main ports are located along the Sea of uh, Azov are Berdyansk, Mariupol, Taganrog, and Yeysk. In my youth, I stayed, stayed at the sea several times. It's a very interesting body of water, I can tell you. Very beautiful, too. But let's talk about the Sea of Azov hominids or humanoids. It happened a few years ago in the middle of summer at the Sea of Azov. The Kerch fishermen took with them, as usual, alcoholic drinks, some snacks, and went to the open sea between the village of Kurortny and Cape Tarhany. However, the men did not calculate the weather right. There was a strong wind that blew and a storm ensued. The boat was tossed by the waves and it disappeared without a trace. Several days have passed. The fishermen were searched for a long time, but without any success. Then everyone decided that the guys were at the bottom of the sea and buried them in absentia, so to say. However, those who were already considered to be drowned suddenly returned alive and well. Not everyone believed about what they said regarding their miraculous escape. So what happened? So at night, the storm that drove the boat far uh, from the shore, the dead storm ended. There was calm. The boat froze on the still water. It was then that the fishermen heard the splash. Then it subsided and shocked fishermen observed in the moonlight, first a human hand clutching uh, the side of the boat and then a face. No, it was not the kind of beauty that people sometimes talk about when they remember mermaids that you can see in my illustrations too. That creature did not have a face, but what he had was a muzzle that resembled a monkey. The creature stared at the people in silence. This creature clinging to the boat was covered with either short hair or scales. Instead of legs, there was a fish tail, but chest was female. The men immediately noticed this. When night adventures, well, when the adventurers were um, finally caught by the rescuers, so to say. They tried to tell about the mermaid that they encountered, but they were just being laughed at. You never know what can seem to you when you're drunk. So here is the situation. You know, they, they, they were away for some time and they had this story about the creature that they observed. Well, two years have passed by. The wife of one of the fishermen she was a fan of night swimming. She decided to splash in the sea. And I got to tell you, it's, it's very interesting to the Sea of Azov at night, from my memories. Very interesting place. She sailed 20, well, she swam 20, uh, 30 meters from the shore and saw burning eyes in front of her that belonged to a creature with a fish tail and a woman's breast. The frightened woman quickly swam to the shore. The monster pursued the woman until she got out into the shallow water, got to her feet and rushed to the shore with a high-pitched squeal. There could be no question of drinking here. So the case was just simply hushed up. 
Now, in my playlist about playlist about underwater humanoids, there are dozens of videos. I will list the link in the description to this video, to the playlist, so you can see them, including those about the Caspian Sea. So I will not need to repeat the bulk of the information here, but I will discuss that sea and its scripted inhabitants today. The sea people, if you can call them that, underwater humanoids, underwater people, they look far from homogeneous. Recently, I've got this piece of information. In 1969, fishermen caught a mermaid in the Azerbaijan area. According to the description of the people who had a good look at her um, when it was placed in the bathtub, she was kind like a girl with a beautiful face and small stature, no more than a meter tall. She had long pointed nails on her hands, which kept the children away from the edge of the top. The mermaid did not eat anything, lay at the bottom of the top and looked fearfully at the children looking at her. Finally, she was taken away in a helicopter by the Soviet military. No one else has heard of her. Both cryptozoologists and ufologists are very much interested in reports of mermaids communicating with fish and cleaning, so to say, the sea. Environmental undertaking. In their opinion, humanity in the Caspian Sea has encountered representatives of an ancient civilization. Most likely, for a long time, those underwater people lived quietly at the bottom of the most extensive salt lake on Earth, the Caspian Sea, until they were disturbed. Their quiet existence, hidden from the eyes of modern men, was disrupted by the predatory exploitation not only of the fish resources of the sea lake, but also by the extraction of oil at its bottom and the pollution of the Caspian Sea, which is dangerous for the habitation of all creatures living in the water. The increase in oil production in that region and underwater volcanic explosions have significantly worsened the reproduction of marine flora and fauna in the Caspian Sea. A Russian city of Astrakhan fishermen, for example, have long complained about the sharp decrease in the number of sturgeon, the complete disappearance of sprats. But what is noteworthy is that the north of the sea, in the north, the underwater environmental situation continues to deteriorate. And in the south, um, where oil exploration is also underway, it has improved markedly since 2007. Who are these underwater creatures? According to Russian researcher Amelchenko, we may be talking about Harris to Atlantis. For the first time, the researcher brought together into a single system the information contained in Plato's manuscript, the paleogeography of the times from the times of Atlantis, the characteristics of the people surrounding this legendary country, and compared the description of metals mined on its territory with metals, well, with minerals found around the Caspian Sea. All this information allowed Amelchenko to choose one of the more than a dozen and a half places um, considered today to be the location of the supposed um, legendary country, the Caspian Sea, this is what he chose. But if Atlantis really was located at the bottom of today's sea lake, then how could the descendants of the Atlanteans have lived unnoticed for such a long time under the waves of the Caspian Sea? To answer that, you need to consider some questions about biology. American zoologist Carl Banzi has published an abstract of his work in the international scientific journal Limnology and Oceanography, Fundamentals of Biology of Mermaids. Here's what he writes, and this is, you know, again, translation back into English from the Russian. So you please understand that. The details of the images of such creatures converge in many ways, starting with the descriptions given by Aristotle. A typical mermaid has binocular vision, meaning her two eyes look in the same direction. She has a characteristic human thumb opposed to the rest, which allows her to grab tools. In all the images, a large head is visible, apparently indicating a well-developed brain. 
The lower part of the body is rather something like the tail plates of cetaceans, and fish scales are just um, folds of skin. However, the zoologist adds with chagrin this species of amphibian is dying out due to environmental pollution and the massive development of fishing, or maybe overdevelopment. Some scientists are not inclined to be ironic about mermaids either. Mermaids are real, says Valentin Sapunov, doctor of biological sciences, a leading researcher at the St. Petersburg Academy of Environmental Safety. Firstly, the sea people have a well-defined habitat, which is typical for real-life individuals. After all, fairy tale devils, goblins, and other creatures do not have such geographical restrictions. Secondly, if we discard insignificant details like the shape of the tail, then the mermaid in all descriptions looks like a humanoid creature. She can be called a relict hominid with long hair. Paranormal researchers, maybe at least some of them, believe that water people or underwater humanoids may be an artificially created race. Stories about half-human, half-fish sea creatures go back to the times of ancient Greece. The population of some seaside town, or maybe even a part of the country, for example Atlantis, was forced to return back to the sea. Apparently, the scientists of that time had the knowledge that allowed them to make adjustments to the human body, which helped to move to semi-aquatic existence. It is assumed that the habitat of the mutants was first at first the warm Mediterranean Sea. Later, fleeing from the onset of technocratic civilizations, some of the species spread to other, less populated regions of the planet. One of the most suitable was the warm Caribbean Sea with its numerous uninhabited islands. That is why strange water creatures are especially common there. In order for people who change their land lifestyles to feel at ease at sea, they were given a tail that was convenient for fast swimming instead of two legs. Although based on the beliefs of the ancient Scandinavians, the tail is an aqualung made of seal skin for faster swimming, so these underwater people have the same two legs as we do. That is, in fact, what was the Azerbaijani oilman observed. The changes made in the water people also affected their lungs, so that representatives of the new race, like dolphins and whales, were able to stay underwater for a long time. With the help of genetic engineering, these underwater people should have had a new thicker skin, the brilliance of which is often talked about by sailors who encountered mermaids, or at least a special kind of fatty lubricant that protects the skin from being corroded by seawater. The transition from a land-based existence to an aquatic one could also be facilitated by the fact that once the ancestors of people came out of the sea, man, of course, does not have the anatomical structure peculiar to marine mammals, says the f- famous French diver Jacques Milo, who spent decades learning how to stay underwater longer, but he has hidden abilities that can be successfully developed. After all, in the deep recesses of our body, there are residual reflexes, reflexes that connect us with our maritime past. These reflexes are part of our genetic luggage. For example, in a person who finds himself in, in an environment of constantly increasing high pressure, the depth reflex is triggered. The blood, begin, uh, the blood begins um, to intensively nourish only the heart, brain, and lungs, ignoring the peripheral parts of the body. That is, the human body begins to work in the mode peculiar to marine mammals, the essence of which is the maximum savings of oxygen. It's all very interesting. So what I want to let you know is that I will continue collection of information on my end, so to say, 
and bring it to you, uh, especially from the areas that are not covered by other researchers around the world. And there's not that many of us, actually. So I will continue to bring you the stories. Um, I was hoping to get more of my underwater humanoids and um, USO's research out in the open. I'm doing my best. And I'm trying to explain to people that it's not only the United States, for example, or United Kingdom, that experience sightings and UFO encounters and so forth. And I've talked to people as far away as Brazil, as Hong Kong, uh, Mexico, where I've been a few times, more than a few times. And uh, it would be great one day if we could somehow collect all these stories, maybe in one big information storage place but that's a dream so i'll continue my research if you can support me you'll find links on how to do it in the uh, description to this uh, video and i'll also put the link to the playlist so you can actually see what happened in the caspian and other parts of the world white sea as well oh yeah the arctic other areas and please uh, like my videos, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you for your attention to my work.